Hi, 5K. So today for math, we're gonna keep talking about um, the oranges and bananas that you saw me cut up last week. So if we were in class, I would have had a lot of different food for you to try that you would have cut up. And then you would have told me if you liked it or not, but we're not at school, so we couldn't do that lesson. So I just made up a graph um, by myself. So I just did the oranges and bananas that we, that I cut up and showed you last week for our fraction lesson. So if you look here, I have all orange at the top and underneath I have b banana at the bottom. So I want you to look here at the graph. You see that orange, the people who like orange, there are one, two, three, four, five people who like oranges and only one, two, three people who like bananas. So if I look at my graph, five people liked bananas. I'm sorry, liked oranges. And three people liked bananas. Well, oh, there's a little glare. You can't see that. I did write the five. <laughs> um, if I look at my graph and I want to know how many more people liked oranges than bananas, I look at where they're the same, remember? So here they're the same. Here they are the same. Here they are the same. So how many more people liked oranges? One, two, because there are two extra tags for the oranges. So now it wants us to write something about our graph. So what we're gonna say is it's really easy to write who has the most. So if you look at the graph, who has the most, oranges or bananas? It's the oranges, the people who liked oranges. So all you have to do when you read a graph, if you have to write something about a graph, is you just, an easy thing is to write who has the most. And if we want to say oranges has the most, well, here's how we spell orange. It's right here on the graph. So we're going to spell orange. You're just watching. So O, or, R, or, J. It sounds like a J, but G E together make the J sound. So G E. Oops. G E. Now it's not just orange has the most. These are oranges. So if I have more than one, I need to write in S. Oranges. I need to leave a space. And what letter do you hear for has? H. A, A. You hear the letter? A. Has. S. S can also make that Z sound. Has. Oranges has. The. You know how to spell the. T. I'm going to go down here because I ran out of room. H. E. Oranges has the, now I need to leave a space and write most. Mm, I hear the letter M. Mm, o. O. Most. S. Most. T. Now it should make sense. Oranges has the most. Yep, I need a period. And all I did was just sound that out. And my, that is correct. Orange does have the most. So people who like oranges have the most tags. I can write oranges, bananas, put S's on there. All right, so now what we're gonna do, this would have taken longer. You guys would have had your own tags. You would have written something about it. Is I want you to grab your lesson 118 paper 118 and I want you you'll do this later I want you to turn and look at number three we're going to do number three and number four together all right it says circle the coins that Judy can use to pay for the marker 
we're doing number three. So if you look at the marker, the marker says it's 21 cents. So I'm gonna write that bigger so you can see. You don't need to write it bigger on your paper. If you want to, you can. It says the marker's 21 cents. Well, you might be thinking, Mrs. Birch, where do we even begin? I don't know how to pay for something that's 21 cents. I don't know what coins to give. I'm gonna give you a clue. The first thing I want you to do is look at how many tens there are. So look at the number 21. Which number is in the tens place? The two or the one who's in the tens place? It's the number two. So I'm gonna write a T above here. All right. And which number's in the ones place? The one. All right, so now we have to circle the coins she can use to pay for the marker. It's 21 cents. So look at my tens. I need two tens. What coin up here is 10 cents? Hmm, I see a dime, a dime, a dime, a nickel, a penny, and a penny. So the first thing let's do is let's write how much money each coin is on top. So a dime is how many cents? 10, you got it. So I'm gonna write a 10. This next coin is a dime, that is also, yes. 10. This next coin is a dime. That is also 10. Oh, this one's bigger. So this is a nickel and a nickel is five cents. So I'm going to write a five. Here's Abraham Lincoln. He's on the penny and a penny is one. This is also a penny and a penny is one. All right. How many tens? Two. So which coin up there is 10 cents? A dime. So I'm going to circle a dime. Now, how do I know if that's enough dimes? How do I know? Why well, look at how many tens? How many tens does it say I need? Two. And how many tens did I circle? I just circled one. So I need two tens. So I need to circle another ten. So 5K, circle another ten. Another dime. So it says I should have two tens. I have that. And how many ones do I have? Only one. Can I circle another dime? No, that's 10, that's not one. Can I circle a nickel? No, it's five, it's not one. What coin do I have to circle? I have to circle a penny. A penny is one cent. And how many pennies am I gonna circle? It says just one. I'm gonna circle one penny. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count because I should have 21. So count by tens and ones with me, ready? Go, 10, 20, switch, 21. Let's do that again, we're just counting the ones that we circled, ready, go. 10, 20, switch, 21. And that matches, 21 cents for the marker. Now for number four, it says, write one observation about your classroom graph about foods. Well, we weren't able to do a classroom graph because we weren't at school. Um, but there is something I do know about all of you and fruits and veggies is that all of you really like apples. You guys really like apples. So that is one observation about me, about my classroom and the students in there is that you guys like apples. So instead of reading a graph right now because we didn't make our graph, um, we're just gonna write that the apples have the most because the kids, you guys, like apples the most. You all, almost all of you like to eat apples. All right, so let's write the kids like apples the most because that would be something about our classroom. So how do we write the? All of you who are gonna do this with me, we're gonna start here, right under the W. The is T H E. All right, the kids. So now we need to leave a space, put your finger there, because it's a new word, kids, is a K, -K, -K. So you have a straight line down, and then the little part goes in and out. K, I, I. What cute little letter says I, I. It's the letter I. K, 
Ed. D. D. Yep. Kids. It's not a Z, it's the other one. An S. Yep, we're going to make an S. Okay, now I'm going to make sure it makes sense. The kids. What word would come next? The kids like. So we're going to spell like. So what do you hear first? Oh, leave a space or a little L. L I I like. What do you hear? Mm -hmm. Yep, let's make a C. All right, we're just spelling what we hear, even if it's not right. This is not how you spell like, actually, but we're just writing what we hear. Because when you do this, you're just going to write what you hear and write your best because everybody will be able to read that and know what you mean. All right, the kids like, now we need to spell apples. Kids like a, a, so leave a space, a, as the letter a. A -p, 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 p and not just one but two the kids like app -ole. l apples s the kids like apples what would we come next the kids like apples, the. Yep, we spell the again. So just like that, but except lowercase t. So we're gonna leave a space, lowercase t. H E. The kids like apples, the most. Yeah, you guys do. Now, I could try to squish it here, but I don't want to do that. If you have enough room, you can. I'm going to go down here to the next row. What do you hear first in most? Do you hear the letter? My favorite, M. Mm, oh. Yep, an L. Most. S. Most. All right, let's go back and read it. It should make sense. We always do that. Ready, go. The kids like apples the most. Now we need a, a period. So my dears, whenever you have to write something about a graph, always look for who has the most because you know how to spell the word most. You can sound that out. And you know how to spell the word the so um, whenever you have to write something about a graph, always look for who has the most, or you can always look for who has the least, least. You can sound that out too. All right, today's math lesson was super short because we weren't actually in the classroom to make a graph, but you read my graph. We've been doing that for the weather all the time. Um, so this is nothing new. This is super easy for you. All right, um, do the rest of the worksheet with your mom, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.